Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Welcome to the uh, prospect list. Uh, thank you for joining. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started with our list. At number 15, we have New Avengers number one, the one in 50. New Avengers number one, the one in 50 Steve Epting cover is a fan favorite. Uh, this Illuminati uh, image is, by all accounts, a, a classic. Uh, Black Swan first appears in this issue. Uh, we suspect that we'll see God Emperor Doom on the big screen uh, in the next five years, uh, and that Black Swan uh, will be a character that we can uh, look forward to seeing in some live-action iteration. Uh, in the event that that's incorrect, this Illuminati cover is still uh, a classic image and one worthy of uh, special attention. There's also a hard-to-find second print and a Campbell sketch variant. At number 14, we have Coyote number 13. So this is a Todd McFarlane's first cover art. You know, and it shocked me to see like what the prices are going for for, for this book. And you know, all it's gonna take for this book to jump up is another Todd McFarlane in-house signing for, for CGC. So be on the lookout for this. Coyote number 13. At number 13, we have Witchblade, number 161. Yeah, this is a great, beautiful, beautiful book. This is, uh, I don't know if it's been completely figured out yet, but it is suspected that this is the very first uh, negative space cover by John Tyler Christopher, who is famous for them, obviously. Um, this is in the guts of this book. This is also first appearance of Apparition. If you are familiar with the world of Witchblade, uh, but otherwise, yeah, no negative space variants are definitely a thing among collectors. Those people that are grabbing them are grabbing all of them, even beyond the stuff that John Tyler Christopher has done. This might be his first and it might be his best. So great book to keep your eyes out for. At number 12, we have Coyote number 11. So you may have seen previously, you know, that we had number 13, and you're probably thinking, why wasn't it 11 on the list? Well, here it is. And so with this, you have McFarlane's first work uh, in comics. And yeah, it's gonna do exactly the same thing. Right now, the, you know, the books have been in the lull in the, about the $30 range, but you know, right before those signings, they always jump up to close to 100. At number 11, we have Marvel Previews presents number three. Particularly a, a favorite uh, for me, this Marvel preview is the first appearance of Afari, uh, Blade's mentor for those who are not uh, avid readers of Blade comics uh, and you know, merely uh, are familiarizing themselves with the character by watching the Wesley Snipes uh, films. Um, Whistler is not in the 616 continuity. And uh, we are really looking forward to seeing Blade on the big screen. A uh, ton of opportunity in magazines. This oversized uh, graphic novel uh, is a fan favorite. Uh, check it out, particularly in high grade. I think there's a lot of room. At number 10, we have Star Wars Vader Down, number one, the Comic Con Box Fairy. Yeah, this was my submission, specifically the color variant mainly because this is the cover art or the art used for this cover is art that is uh, from the movie poster that was released uh, for the third Star Wars movie at the time. It was called Revenge of the Jedi. Uh, and that movie poster was distributed throughout the United States and overseas. Uh, and then George Lucas decided he didn't like that name. He, he uh, didn't like the word revenge in the title, changed it, and in the U.S. we got all new movie posters. Uh, that original movie poster goes for huge money, if you can find it uh, on eBay or elsewhere, one of the originals. Uh, they did use this art overseas with the tagline, with the, the new title, uh, Return of the Jedi, 
Uh, but in the U.S., we changed to new art, from from my understanding. So this is kind of a deep cut for for Star Wars fans. Uh, it's really cool to see the art used on a on a Star Wars comic collectible, uh, and it, it's a fun one to have in your collection if you run across it. This came in Comic Con box. Uh, San Diego Comic Con had their own mystery box for a while. Those mystery boxes uh, came with some other goodies as well, so it's hard to get them in good condition since they were rattling around with toys became polybagged uh but yeah just wanted to keep your keep your eyes peeled for at number nine we have amazing spider-man number 30 volume two so this is a great book i, I believe it's the first appearance of moreland and and by all intents and purposes it's the the first time j scott campbell ever did the art for uh spider-man uh, it's an incredible cover. I, I, it's one of those covers that everybody seems to forget about. But, you know, if you're a J. Scott Campbell collector, it, it, it's one to have. And it's an important book because there's speculation that Moreland may appear in the next Spider-Verse movie. Uh, you know, just look at... This is him in his early years. I mean, just incredible art. It just pops off of that white cover. Um, beautiful, beautiful cover. Uh, if you're out and you see this in the wild, you got to pick it up. I mean, this book is so undervalued. It's it's a joke. Um, I mean, you know, Aaron, Aaron uh, highlighted a couple of Todd McFarlane firsts. I mean, this is the first time J. Scott Campbell did a, a Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man. So, um, if you see it, pick it up. At number eight, we have Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, annual number one. So this is a $20 to $30 book online in high grade. And the first appearance cover of Shang-Chi and Iron Fist together. And the main story, the continuity of David Carradine, shows Kung Fu, Moose, and Strikes, while Boris Karloff is Fu Manchu, shang Chi's father. $30 in, high, in a high grade tough book, Cardine, Fu Manchu, Karloff, and Christopher Lee through, throughout the guts in multiple adventures and battles with the Marvel characters. If Iron Fist and Shang-Chi are on the same screen together, this, will book, this book will become golden. Awesome book under the radar. At number seven, we have Amazing Spider-Man, annual number two. Okay, this is one of my favorite Amazing Spider-Man covers. I mean, uh, you get your money's worth with this cover. You have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Spider-Mans drawn on this on this cover. You know, this is uh, one of my favorite Ditko covers. Uh, it is so undervalued. It's the first time Doctor Strange and, and, and Spider-Man meet. And you, with the new movie coming up... Uh, you know, and and their relationship is is built. This is a this is a book that 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 is key. Um, it, it's it's been under the radar for for years and years. But you know, if you if if you, uh, you can get copies right now at at a great price on eBay or 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 <laughs> wherever. I mean, the the thing about this, it it's it's tough to find in high grade though. Uh, so if you if you find them in high grade, uh, you know, get them graded from CBCS or CGC. But uh, this is such a, a great book. At number six, we have Immortal Iron Fist number seventeen, the one in ten, the David Aha negative space variant. Aha uh -huh, knocks it out of the park as per usual. Uh, we're really uh, bullish on the Iron Fist. Uh, iterations uh, particularly in light of the fan disappointment around the Danny Rand character I, I think there's a ton of opportunity here uh, over the long haul uh, characters like Kwai Jun Pham uh, are fan favorites and everybody loves an iron fist with a six shooter at number five we have Amazing Spider-Man number 360 Okay, so here's a, another debate for the, the comic community, you know, which is uh, Carnage's first appearance. Is it this one or is it 361? And it's the 
almost the same scenario with Hulk 180 and Hulk 181. You know, he Carnage is in several panels in this book, and it even says the name Carnage, almost like when uh, Wolverine pops out and he's like, "Hey, I'm Wolverine," you know. So, but you know, the comic community, you know, has has you know stated that 361 is his first appearance, but you know, as 361 continues to soar and and get out of reach, uh, this would be a a the next one you, you should get. You know, it, it's it's an early appearance of a key character. You know, the the movie soon to come out, and it's probably going to be a a hit with Woody Harrelson. So um, you could still snag these up at a good price. So you know, get to buying. <laughs> At number four, we have Thor, number 129. Yeah, I, uh, this was one of my submissions. This is the first appearance of Ares, uh, the first appearance of Hephaestus, and first appearance of Artemis. And I believe, I, I believe it's also the first cover appearance of Zeus. I've gone back and tried to look for earlier uh cover shots of him and, and couldn't find any. I think this is his first cover. But the idea behind uh, this book and, and how it, it might be going places is mainly Aries. Uh, we know in, in Love and Thunder coming up, we already have uh, Zeus casting. So we're getting the Greek pantheon, hypothetically, at least one of them. Uh, if we are getting the Greek pantheon, Aries would really make sense when we're looking at this uh, this other team that's being recruited in the post credit scenes with U.S. agent with Yelena Belova. Uh, Aries was the the Thor figure in the Dark Avengers, uh, and he would be a perfect fit for whatever they're putting together now. We have it's very much speculation at this point, uh, but even if even if he doesn't appear, we've still got Zeus. Uh, showing up for sure so i like this book a lot at number three we have cable and deadpool number 24. so this is a 40 dollars book that and uh, this is the first meeting between spider-man and deadpool uh, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship uh, that friendship continues in a, its own ongoing series spider-man and deadpool comics which ran for over 40 comics uh, buy it now before Deadpool hits the MCU and watch this book blossom into something beautiful. At number two, we have The Immortal Iron Fist, number two, the second print. Yeah, this was another pick by Richie. Uh, and again, just like Nico was saying earlier, uh, with the rumors of Iron Fist showing up in Shang-Chi, uh, Iron Fist is kind of in a down point right now. A lot of people have bad taste in their mouth over that Netflix series and the, the casting from that. Uh, but it is very much a, a, a big figure in this in the MCU. And all of these uh, different Iron Fists over the centuries uh, could become important, just like the, the Spirits of Vengeance we're looking at, not just Ghost Rider, but the other iterations as well, like Nico said. So um yeah this is the first appearance of wu ao shi a female iron fist from the 1600s uh and one of the earliest female iron fists that would be a hell of a cover to get a 9.8 on with all that black on that spine uh but yeah this is a another great pick by richie and for our number one book this week we have Amazing Spider-Man, number 365, and also Spider-Man 2099, number one. It's well settled that an iteration of Spider-Man 2099 will appear in the Into the Spider-Verse sequel that is slated for release in the next year or so. Uh, the first Sony film, uh, by all accounts, was extraordinary, and... Um, Many described it as the greatest Spider-Man film ever made. Uh, that film will center around Spider-Man 2099. Uh, Miguel O'Hara's character is beloved by fans, and 
Uh, for those who are uh, have the financial means to pick up a copy of the Spider-Man 2099 uh, number one second print, uh, it just makes sense. Uh, if that book is already out of your price range, uh, we believe there's still an opportunity uh, to see some uh, increases in the price of both uh, ASM 365 and Spider-Man 2099 number one. Uh, we would encourage you to look for the newsstand editions of these books, uh, but high-grade copies are always going to be sought after by collectors. Yeah, and this was a great pick from uh, Chris Colbert, and um, originally he had just nominated the ASM 365, and I was speaking to him backstage, and I was like, hey, you know, we've had this book previously on the list, the uh, Spider-Man 2099, so why don't we just combine both and have both on the list together. So, you know, smart pick, good plays. I would say too, uh, this might be maybe two or three chess moves ahead. <laughs> Not that, I guess that's what we all try to do, right? In speculation, we try to guess what will happen. But I think it is inevitable that 2099 hits the live action screen at some point in time. I mean, we, we might be phase eight by that time, but uh, Marvel is going to make everything that they can and that's a world that's that it will hit the screen uh we've got the animated one coming up next year i believe uh but even after that is coming on this 2099 weather so. so you know like even if he doesn't like you know feige's done some strange things you, you never know if you know Peter Parker ends up in this costume, you know, and the costume is introduced. I mean, so there, there's so many plays with this book. Um, but yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, Joe, if we see Miguel O'Hara in Spider-Man No Way Home in a post credit scene. I mean, legitimately in this Sony Spider-Man universe, I feel like anything can happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's uh, it's it's gone buck wild, man. I mean, they've opened up everything for anybody to pop out at any given time. So we'll see. It, but yeah, a newsstand in that 365, they're tough to find in high grade. So if you find them, man, a lot of them are loaded with uh, binary issues on the top and the bottom corners. And uh, it's a pain in the ass to press. But if you find them... You know, and definitely you don't want that hologram scratched up either, man, because a lot of them were scratched up if they're in dollar bins and things like that. So if you're going to find one, look for one that the, the hologram is nice and clean and, and the corners are, are pretty sharp and you might have a chance of getting a high grade. Well, I want to thank everyone for watching the prospect list. Uh, we have something special for you next week. So make sure to like and subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. Um, catch you on the flip side. Um, um you can't um, edit this. Um, I'm not going um, to. <laughs> um, uh, uh. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, iconic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was nine ums. You got to cut that. I know. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs>